Now, let's look at this example of a Kafka cluster, which has two brokers, broker 1 and broker 2. It also has a topic, topic A, with four partitions, P1, P2, P3, and P4. Now, let's say we have four consumers, each of which is listening on the topic, topic A. Consumers logically belong to a consumer group. But if you do not specify a consumer group for a consumer, a unique consumer group is assigned to the consumer. So in this case, each of the consumers will have its own consumer group. So let's say consumer 1 is assigned to consumer group 1, consumer 2 is assigned to consumer group 2, consumer 3 is assigned to consumer group 3, and consumer 4 is assigned to consumer group 4. Now, Kafka provides the guarantee that each consumer group listening on a topic will receive data from all the partitions of that topic. So in this case, consumer 1 will receive the data from all the four partitions of topic A. Consumer 2 will also receive the data from all the four partitions of topic A. Consumer 3 will also receive the data from all the four partitions of topic A. And similarly, consumer 4 will also receive the data from all the four partitions of topic A. Now, there is another important concept that you have to know regarding consumer groups and partitions. From a consumer group, only one consumer can receive data from a particular partition. Let's again take a look at this example of a Kafka cluster having two brokers, broker 1 and broker 2, and having a topic, topic A, with four partitions, P1, P2, P3, and P4. Again, as we have seen in the example before, let's say we have four consumers, each of which is listening on the topic, topic A. But now, let's say that instead of each consumer having its own unique consumer group, we create consumer 1 and consumer 2 in consumer group 1, and consumer 3 and consumer 4 in consumer group 2. So, there are two consumer groups, each consumer group having two consumers, and both consumer groups are listening on a Kafka topic, topic A, and topic A has four partitions, P1, P2, P3, and P4. Now, if you look at how the data is consumed by the consumers, it may be similar to this. From consumer group 1, consumer 1 receives data from partitions P1 and P3, and consumer 2 receives data from partitions P2 and P4. From consumer group 2, consumer 3 receives data from partitions P1 and P3 whereas consumer 4 receives data from partitions P2 and P4. As you can see, two consumers from a consumer group never receive the data from the same partition at the same time. This is an important concept and keep this in mind as we continue with the course. Now, let's slightly modify our example. Let's say all the four consumers now belong to the same consumer group. In that case, each consumer receives data from a separate partition. Consumer 1 receives data from partition 1. Consumer 2 receives data from partition 2. Consumer 3 receives data from partition 3. And consumer 4 receives data from partition 4. Now, let's look at another important concept called rebalancing. In this example, let's say one of the consumers, say consumer 4, has an issue and is shut down. Now, partition 4 does not have a consumer in consumer group 1. In this case, Kafka rebalances the consumers, such that another consumer starts listening to partition 4. In this case, consumer 3, for example, listens to both partition 3 and partition 4. But when consumer 4 comes back up, 
Kafka rebalances the consumers again so that consumer 4 listens to partition 4 and consumer 3 no longer listens to partition 4. So that's it for Kafka consumers for now. Remember, messages are consumed from a Kafka topic by Kafka applications or programs called as Kafka consumers. Kafka consumers use the consumer API provided by the Kafka platform. Consumers logically belong to a consumer group. If you do not specify a consumer group for a consumer, a unique consumer group is assigned to the consumer. Two consumers from a consumer group never receive the data from the same partition at the same time. Kafka rebalances consumers whenever a consumer is shut down or a new consumer is added to the consumer group. So I will see you in the next lecture where we will wrap up this section by talking about Zookeeper. So hope you found this video useful and if you want to check out the course, the link to the course is provided in the description below. Visit our website interviewgrid.com where you will find tutorials, courses and interview questions on a wide variety of subjects and topics. Finally, thank you and do not forget to subscribe to this channel since we will be posting new videos similar to this video every week.